Did you know that Charles Darwin knew about the key issue in his theory that doesn't add up? Did you know that he was troubled by the fact that an entire field of scientific study opposes the key tenets of evolution? Yes, he sure was, and although he was hoping that future discoveries would fix his problem, the evidence that emerged shattered that hope into a thousand pieces. Join me for this video to learn why Darwin was spot on in his doubts and find out what this means for the theory of evolution. Hi, my name is Lucas and this is my apologetics channel Deflate, which challenges skeptics, strengthens believers and creates a space for awesome discussions about God. With this video I'm launching a new series that will introduce you into the basics of intelligent design and of critical thinking about evolution. Check out the video description and pinned comment to find out more. Let's get started. Darwin's hypothesis begins with the craft of pigeon breeding. He observed that by carefully selecting from within a given set of pigeons, specific pigeons with certain characteristics, breeders are able to create a new set of pigeons. Depending on the goal and selection of the breeder, the newly bred set of pigeons would differ in overall size, color or size of wings from the original set. Based on that, Darwin suggested that nature was vested with the same creative powers as the breeder. Namely, it would select those features in animals that are useful in the struggle for survival. This is why he said that I have called this principle by which each slight variation, if useful, is preserved by the term natural selection in order to mark its relation to man's power of selection. And so Darwin's hypothesis in the origin of species was essentially this. Starting from one common ancestor, all life forms evolved slowly and gradually over long periods of time as random mutation would bring up new traits from which natural selection would preserve or select the ones that are useful for survival. Accordingly, his theory predicted that the gradual development of species would be reflected in the geological record with an endless array of transitional fossilized animal forms, which would allow paleontologists and biologists to trace the tiny steps biological organisms took in evolving from one species into the next. Yet at the same time, when he published The Origin of Species in 1859, paleontologists had bad news for him. The fossil record showed very clearly that new species appear suddenly and abruptly and not by evolving in small step-by-step -step fashion over long periods of time. For this reason, the most prominent paleontologists at Darwin's time rejected his theory. The issue was not that there were some minor inconsistencies here and there between Darwin's theory and the fossil record. No, it was that the science of paleontology as a whole and everything paleontologists knew presented a picture that was diametrically opposed to the one Darwin tried to paint. Darwin himself was painstakingly aware of that and he expressed his discomfort repeatedly in his book, like here for example, as according to the theory of natural selection an interminable number of intermediate forms must have existed. Why is not every geological formation charged with such links? Or here, the abrupt manner in which whole groups of species suddenly appear in certain formations has been urged by several paleontologists as a fatal objection to the belief in the transmutation of species. If numerous species have really started into life all at once, the fact would be fatal to the theory. And what was Darwin's response? I can answer these questions and objections only on the supposition that the geological record is far more imperfect than most geologists believe. Only a small portion of the world has been geologically explored. So Darwin asserted that paleontologists simply hadn't unearthed yet the interminable number of intermediate forms his theory predicted to exist, hoping that the future of paleontology would change that and vindicate him. In other words, he was essentially making an argument from silence and explained away the absence of evidence instead of explaining the evidence scientists were actually facing. That is, the fact of new animal forms showing up suddenly and abruptly in the fossil record rather than gradually. Had you lived at the time of Darwin and were excited about his theory, you might have joined him in hoping that those innumerable intermediate forms in the fossil record would be unearthed later on. Have these hopes come true? Nope. On the contrary, the fossil evidence that has surfaced has made Darwin's problem much more severe as we are about to see. In the year 1909, Charles Doolittle Walcott, then director of the Smithsonian Institute in Washington DC, discovered the Burgess Shale in British Columbia, Canada, 
which until today is considered one of the most important finds in the history of paleontology. Walcott's team collected more than 65,000 animal fossils, many of which were remarkably well preserved, belonging to a variety of different phyla. Now, here's an important term you want to wrap your head around. Phyla. What is that? Borrowing Stephen Meyer's definition, the term phyla, singular phylum, refers to divisions in the biological classification system. The phyla constitute the highest or widest categories of biological classification in the animal kingdom, with each exhibiting a unique architecture, organizational blueprint or structural body plans. Here are three examples of three different phyla. The phylum of the arthropods includes all insects, all spiders, all types of crabs, lobster, as well as animals such as the trilobites. The phylum of the Nidarians includes corals, jellyfish and sea anemones and the phylum of the chordates includes, among other animals, all birds, all reptiles, all fish and all mammals. In each of these phyla, all the animals, as different as they may look from each other, are united by their organizational structure, which is also the very thing that allows us to differentiate between all the phyla. The animal kingdom is usually organized into 35 different phyla and the known fossil record features animals representing about 27 of, sto of those 35 phyla. Of the 27 phyla featured in the fossil record, 20 make their first and sudden appearance within one single geological time period called the Cambrian era, without evidence of fossilized forms in older strata which could be considered their evolutionary precursors. The Cambrian era is generally held to span from around 540 million years ago to around 490 million years ago. However, the time window in which the 20 Cambrian phyla show up is far smaller and has been calculated to cover no more than 10 million years. In fact, an MIT geochronologist has calculated that at least 16 completely new phyla appear within no more than 6 million years of the Cambrian era. 16 fundamentally different body plants within 6 million years. That's a lot of anatomical innovation within a mere blink of an eye on an evolutionary timescale. In fact, if we compress the history of life on Earth, which began around 3.5 billion years ago, into a 24-hour day, those 6 million years would make up no more than 75 seconds. Within this tiny time window of 6 million years, the trilobite, that icon of paleontology shows up, a creature with a rather complex body plan that is divided into three parts, a head, thorax and tail. It's got three longitudinal lobes across the head, while the thorax and tail consist of around 30 segments. However, probably the most impressive anatomical fact about trilobites are their lens-focusing compound eyes, which allow for a 360-degree field of vision. That's a brief sketch of the animal most of us probably associate with the word fossil, and it's this animal that arguably exemplifies the paleontological challenge to evolution best. For if Darwin's theory holds true, how did complex animal forms such as the trilobite show up suddenly within a mere 6 million years with zero evidence of a precursor from which it supposedly evolved? Walcott's phenomenal find in the Burgess Shale in 1909 was a major key that helped paleontologists gain such a detailed understanding of how animals showed up on the stage of life. But it's important to point out that in the 100 plus years that have passed since then, paleontologists have consistently encountered the exact same picture around the world when making new discoveries. A wide variety of animals whose fundamental body plans are as different from one another as that of a starfish and a dragonfly make their sudden appearance all at once within a tiny window of time that briefly opened around 540 million years ago. This phenomenon has come to be referred to as the Cambrian Explosion. Remember that Darwin admitted that the abrupt manner in which whole groups of species suddenly appear in certain geological formations was a potentially fatal objection to his entire theory. Also remember that he could answer these questions and objections only on the supposition that the geological record is far more imperfect than most geologists believe, as he asserted that only a small portion of the world has been geologically explored. 
But if the Darwinian argument from silence was already problematic back in 1859, it has become utterly untenable today. The science of paleontology has, like any other scientific discipline, made huge leaps in the past century. And there is no escaping the fact that what we're confronted with when we look at the fossil record is an explosion of animal forms within virtually no time at all, while the interminable number of intermediate forms with which every geological formation is supposed to be charged continue to be conspicuously absent. Yet, that's not even the half of it when you consider that some of the fossils that have been discovered after Darwin by Walcott and others exhibit body plans that weren't even known when the Origin of Species was published. This means that while Darwin had every reason to be troubled by the fact that the fossil record was hanging like a Damocles sword over his theory, far weightier reasons for even greater Darwinian anxiety have now been added, and here is why. It's not just that the interminable number of intermediate forms of the animals known to Darwin have not been found. Instead, what has been found are entirely new animal forms exhibiting body plans and anatomical structures, which Darwin didn't even know to exist, and they too appear suddenly and without any precursory forms preceding them in the fossil record. In other words, the very problem whose lethal potential Darwin admitted to has not just not been solved by paleontology as Darwin had hoped. Instead, it has become multiple times more serious as the modern science of paleontology presents us with a picture that consistently shows the exact opposite of what one would expect with the Darwinian hypothesis of gradual change over time. Sure, ever since the extent of the Cambrian explosion was laid bare by Walcott's phenomenal discovery, Darwinists have tried to come up with hypotheses that would reconcile the stubborn fact of paleontology with evolutionary theory. None of them work, however, because the facts are what they are, and trying to reconcile the fossil record with evolution is to force a square peg into a round hole. Nevertheless, in my next video I will look at some of these Darwinian rescue attempts, so make sure you subscribe and check out my channel Deflate if you want to hear more from me or go to intelligentdesign.org to learn more about the issues we talked about in this video.